up everybody? Welcome to week 13 here on the 52 Horrific Weeks 1988 series. I am your host Mood616 and thank you once again for stopping in. Alrighty guys, yeah, um, week 13 is already here, it's crazy. Uh, I apologize if I start coughing or whatever during this review because I'm really fucking sick right now. I'm trying to kick this shit but I'm still going strong with the reviews. Um, so anyways, uh... Yeah, put the remaining films into the randomizer, hit that random button, of course. And we have Slime City. Oh man, I was super stoked when this came up, like I am almost every week, you know how the deal is, but... Um, yeah, I love this film, man. This is a great fucking movie. Um, just, you know, your typical kind of Sherlock fucking melt shit from the 80s. Uh, super fun stuff. Directed by uh, Gregory Lamberson, who actually ended up doing a sequel to this film... Um, roughly 20 years later, uh, called Slime City Massacre, featuring Debbie Roshan in the film, too, uh, which is also another really cool film you need to check out. It was released by Shriek Show, I believe. Um, yeah, this this edition right here was released by Retro Shockorama. Very nice edition, got really cool uh, special features, lots of, um, you know, little mini documentaries on the making of the film and stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, getting into the plot of this one, uh, it's it follows your main character Alex. Uh, he is just moved into this new, uh, well, not a new apartment, but he just moved into this old apartment in New York. Um, he's got a girlfriend by the name of Lori. Um, she is a virgin, so therefore Alex is a very sexual frustrated individual, um, to say the least. Um, now he wants Lori to move in with him, but she's having kind of second thoughts and whatnot and stuff. So she eventually, actually, at first, doesn't move in with him. And, uh, anyways, so, um, Alex is a, he's an artist, he's kind of like a starving artist kind of deal, um, anyways, he starts to, you know, kind of meet the people that are in the building and stuff, uh, he meets this one girl that she's like an actress, he meets this other guy that's, um, that's actually a writer, and whatnot, anyways, he starts having, you know, relationships with them, the girl's, the one girl, the actor, she starts to kind of seduce him a little bit and stuff, he's very much attracted to her, like I said, he's very sexually frustrated, so, the opportunities there for him. Um, then he start. He meets this, uh, uh, you know, this writer or whatever, and he starts having, you know, he starts going over there for meals and stuff like that, um, and having this like really weird. I think they call it Himalayan yogurt is what is what he's being fed and stuff like that. It's like this really weird green goo and shit. He's drinking this really odd booze, um, and then he starts to kind of change a little bit. You know, after he starts eating this shit, he starts to like basically kind of ooze this, this really gross uh, kind of gooey melty shit out of his body and stuff and it starts making him go crazy see when he when he starts turning into like this melty man kind of deal thing he uh he starts to get really violent and he starts to kill people and shit um he soon realizes that killing people actually brings him back to normal um so but uh you know during he's trying to figure out what the fuck is going on with this shit, like why he's turning into this and stuff. He does finally realize that it's from this yogurt and this, uh, this Luxar booze or this Luxar booze that he's being fed and stuff. But he soon as he soon as find out, he finds out that all the people in the building are actually, um, basically possessed. Uh, they were possessed by the spirits of all these people that committed suicide, uh, in the basement of this building centuries ago. Um, by uh, and they were all led by this um, this occult leader named Zachary. So yeah, there was this big suicide pact, and all these spirits have possessed all the people in this building and stuff. And uh, basically, what happens is, um, you know, they need him. They need Alex uh, to basically bring out Zachary and stuff like that. Um, you know, to do some other shit. You know, uh, it's kind of um, a very interesting storyline that. Um, uh, with all the possession in the film and stuff like that. There's a lot actually going on in this film, to be honest. I'll just leave the plot right there. Uh, get, in, get into my thoughts on this one. Um, it's a really, really fucking fun film with actually kind of a complex storyline. I mean, not really that complex. I mean, basically, to break it down, if you know that didn't really make a lot of sense, basically there was a suicide pact in this basement. The spirits of those dead... Um, you know, those dead people have possessed everybody in this building and stuff, and now they're all basically working for Zachary to try and get, you know, him back and stuff. Um, Zachary actually, his daughter runs the building, 
and she's the one that's been administering all this, uh, you know, the, the drink and, you know, the yogurt and stuff like that to these people to possess them and shit. Um, yeah, it's a really, really weird story. I kind of, I kind of like how they did it. You know, it's, it's kind of intriguing. It's different anyways. It's kind of got like a, a weird melty kind of slasher vibe to it, but it's not a slasher film at all. Um, the music in this film is fantastic. Very cheesy kind of, you know, 80s keyboard fucking synth type music and stuff. The effects are awesome. Very kind of cheesy effects, but very gross. Uh, when Alex is changing and he looks like, you know, when he's all melting and shit, the colors that they use, they use like a lot of greens and oranges and shit. Um, just really fucking nasty looking. Really fucking nasty. <laughs> like, I'm sick and it was fucking making me gag actually watching this film again, um, which is a good thing, you know. Uh, some of the kills, some of the acting in the film is really, really funny. There's this one scene where Alex actually, you know, takes his hooker up to his room and uh, wants to kill her, or basically kills her, but he slashes her in the face, and when she looks at him, she says, oh, you crazy bastard, like, with, like, barely any emotion. It's got to be the fucking funniest thing I've seen in a long time, but, uh, you know, overall, it's a really fucking fun film. You know, he got his girlfriend and stuff, and she basically has to, you know, save the day. You know, she f has to figure out what exactly is going on in this building and stuff, and she needs to figure out and save the day and shit. The whole end scene, the last, like, 15, 20 minutes of this film is just one huge fucking gore fest. Um, yeah, there's, the film runs about 80 minutes. It's like a perfect length, but it's got, uh, you know, it's got kills throughout the film, you know, periodically done and stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, keeps you entertained. You know, there's a, there's a few kind of minor slower parts and stuff. You know, you got the police vet, you got a police investigation, of course, going on in this film. Um, this one investigating officer is very much into Alex. You know, he thinks he's weird. He, he figures something's up with him and stuff. So you got that angle going on, plus all this possession and and um, and the melting man Alex. You know, uh, yeah. So there's lots going on in this film for an 80 minute film. Um, you know, for an 80s kind of cheesy schlock type film. Uh, it's very well done, very well done, um, and I do highly recommend getting, you know, checking out the sequel too. I was very in interested that uh, that he actually did make a sequel to this movie so much later, you know, 21 years later, I believe it came out in 2009, so, um, but yeah, what else can I say about this one? It's just a fun-ass film. If you've never seen this before, definitely give it a shot. Uh, I believe this is out of print now, um, but I think you can still find it for decent prices, so. Uh, if I had to rate this, I'd probably give it a good 7.5. Nah, I'd probably give it an 8 out of 10. It's just a lot of fucking fun. A lot of fun. If you like these melt films, I wish they would make a lot more melt type films like Street Trash and, you know, Slime City and shit like that. But, um, yeah. I mean, if you know of any other really, you know, obscure kind of melt films, let me know about them. Uh, I know I have a bunch in my in my collection, but... This is a fucking fun film. Um, yeah, so I think that's going to do it for Slime City. Definitely check this shit out. It's fucking awesome. Great, great fun. Uh, yeah, I know my boy Dustin Keckler is a huge fucking fan of this film. Actually, my boy Scotty, Willie Mark One, is a big fan of this film too. So definitely check this out. Great stuff. Uh, that's going to do it for week 13 here on the 88 series. Man, I can't believe that it's already been 13 weeks. So crazy. Still not a sequel, so... Um, but anyways, guys, that's going to do it. I will check you guys next week. Peace out.